G'day, Flozy in here. And uh, today we're going to be looking at the optical stabilization that you get in lens with some of the Sony lenses and their available counterparts and stuff, and just how well it works compared to a non stabilized lens like the Sigma 16mm f1.4. Great little lens, but uh, without image stabilization, it can be a little shaky. Things like this 18 to 105 uh, f4 OSSG lens do have optical stabilization, that's what the OSS stands for. Yeah, so lenses like this have the optical stabilization and allow them to get rid of a lot of the micro judders and stutters that are apparent when vlogging and uh, doing handheld movements. So we'll take a comparison of the two different lenses and let's see how they go. Okay, so what we've got here is the 18-105 to OSS G lens, so this has got the optical steady stabilization built into the lens. Now this allows the lens to get rid of most of the micro jitters from me holding it and believe me I'm shaking like crazy at the moment. The recording is on 4K 24 FPS and we're shooting at 1 over 50 frames and F4. This has got an ND filter on the lens so hopefully we cut down some of the brightness while we're still trying to get the lowest uh, depth of field and uh, frame rate. Now I'm just walking really gently at the moment and you can sort of get an idea of the movement that you would see with the OSS engaged. Now it's, it's not particularly bad, you definitely don't get the micro jitters, but there's still some of the movement as I'm clumsily trotting along. I am wearing thongs at the moment and my footsteps aren't exactly light, floaty, like a ballerina. I'm a heavy footed type. Now what we've also got is the 16mm f1.4 from Sigma. It is a non-image image stabilised lens. We'll be able to compare the two, get a bit of an idea about what the OSS actually does for the general shakes and movements of the camera. I think it does a pretty good job overall. It would be nice to um, have a slightly higher frame rate. If I was able to shoot at 30 FPS or 60 FPS, it would definitely make things a bit smoother as well. But to get the most field of view with the 18mm on there, I have to shoot at 24 frames per second, which shoots in 30, Super 35 on the camera, which gives me the most widest field of, field of view, so it doesn't seem too close up. That's Anyway, let's switch over the lenses now and try the 16mm out. All right, so now we've got the 16mm f1.4, shooting in 4K at 24 frames per second and we're at f4 and 1 over 50th in the frame rates. I do have a CPL ND filter on here but it's nowhere near as strong as the ND filter on the 18mm so even at f4 this is looking a little bit blown out. I'm just going to drop... It's looking a little bit better. So the object of this is to get an idea about this OSS, non-OSS kind of stability. So just as we're walking down the street now We've got the uh, OSS feature off with this lens as it doesn't have it built in and the camera doesn't have any in-body stabilization. The A6600 does have in-body stabilization, but from what I've seen, it's pretty ordinary. The little body doesn't allow it very much uh, space to have motorized sensor movements, so it doesn't give it the best image stabilization. Probably works better for pictures than it does for video. But in this case, we have no in-body stabilization and no image stabilization on the lens. And we're just walking casually up and down the street, probably seeing a lot of the micro jitters and each footsteps as it goes thump, thump. And we're now at F.8, F8, sorry. So a lot more field of view in the background. All right, in this next clip, I've used the stabilization from DaVinci Resolve to help with the picture 
but it's filmed on the 16mm f1.4. It should look uh, a little bit better, but let me know what you think. Otherwise, that's all for me. Peace out for now. Bye. And then we raise up the frame, the shutter speed. And you get the idea of how shallow the depth of field gets at f1.4 and how much more wide angle view you get shooting at 16mm to 18mm. Definitely don't have to hold my arm out nearly as far to get the same kind of field of view. And I keep changing my hands because this gets kind of tiring walking around like this. But you definitely get a, an idea of how much camera shake is involved with the OSS to non-OSS. And the depth of field from f1.4 to f8. F8. All right, that should be it. Do us. Let's head back into the studio. All right, so that was the two different lenses basically being walked up and down my street and uh, the available OSS characteristics that you're going to see versus not see when uh, comparing the two. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Was it worth the extra wide angle view and the shallow depth of field to go the F16, uh, the F yeah, the 16 f1.4, or does the 18 f4 do just the trick with the in-body stabilization? So in-body stabilization, f4, 18 to 105, non-in-body stabilization, 16 f1.4. And uh, yeah, just for uh, details sake, this is the f1.4 16 millimeter Sigma that I'm filming on at the moment. And as you can see, it has incredible detail really you can really see the uh, the finer points with this lens the 18 to 105 is nowhere near as sharp as the 16 but offers those little perks like in body stabilization zoom function um, and yeah see how it goes anyway let me know what you think and uh, maybe some ideas for some videos coming up cheers hit the like button subscribe all that jazz thanks for stopping by see ya